Right, good afternoon boys and girls. Got Christmas carols to learn because there are only, including this week, four Sundays to practice. Okay, only four Sundays to practice the Christmas carols. Got this week, and next week, and then two more weeks, and then we're at the Christmas service. And the Christmas service is really early this year because uh, Christmas is a wee bit later in the month. Well, it's not, it's the same day every other year, but because of the way the Sundays fall, it's a wee bit later than, than normal. However, David said a couple of weeks ago that this song that we're going to sing reminds him of Christmas, and I really like it as well. So we're going to use this one as the first one to warm up our voices before we get into the rest of the Christmas carols as well. This is the Hallelujah Chorus. Well, it's not the Hallelujah, that's a song. This is the Hallelujah in the Chorus is the one I really want to do. So let's sing this one here because it reminds David of Christmas and, well, I really like it as well. So let's sing this one first. first Christmas carol and it's one that goes quite fast quite jumpy not a traditional slow one see him lying on a bed of straw everybody know this one yeah, yeah well let's practice this one so we can go really well <laughs> Thank you. 
Next carol then, I'm not sure everybody will know it. It's, uh, well, it's, it is quite a well-known one, but I'm not sure everybody knows. Does everybody know this one? Yes. It's quite a, quite a rare one, isn't it? No, I'm getting some funny looks. No, it's probably one of the most famous Christmas carols. Away in a manger. That's fine. Well, this is actually to the traditional tune. Right, let's do Away in a manger then. of the Bible. Our books of the Bible chorus, I, I'm being a wee bit kind today because normally I do the recognition of the books first and then we sing the chorus, but today I'm going to sing the chorus first because today we're going to try and sing the fastest. Yes, we're going to try and sing the fastest version of this. So let's see if we can all get it and say all the books of the Bible, Old and New Testament, as we sing the very fastest version of our chorus. Right, let's see if we can do it all together then.
that's actually quite impressive. I could hear you, you were just keeping up and no more. Just keeping up and no more. There was a few bits, the music was just maybe a half beat faster, but you caught up in another word. So I was really impressed with that, it was really good. Let's see then, who can tell me what the yellow, I'm not going to do the Old Testament because we know the Old Testament really well now. What about the New Testament then? What is the four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Right, church history is the grey book. What is the book which we know as church history? Tia, it is the Acts. Now, when we have Paul's epistles, these are letters written to people or churches, and he wrote quite a few. Some of them are really easy because it's first and second, first and second, first and second, but what are they? Right, so we had, Sophie was able to tell us that we have Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon. Right, the general epistles. That's epistles not written by Paul, but they are still letters to either people or to churches. So from Philippians, we have Hebrews, James, not 1 James. David was leading you astray a couple of weeks ago. 1 James. There is only one James, but it's just James. James, and then 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation. This is excellent. So you've done really well to memorize all the books of the Bible. So that's 66 books of the Bible that we've managed to memorize. 66. That's really impressive. At the very start, when we started doing these books of the Bible, hardly anybody could see any of the books, and certainly none of the Zephaniahs, Zechariahs, Malachi's, Haggai's, none of these books. But now we can see them all, which is really, really good. Right, we're going to do our new song that we've been singing the parts to. We're going to do this one. Right, so boys are on the white bits, and the girls are on the pink bits when they come up.
Sounds really good though, it is sounding really good. Right, another one that's also very good sounding is another Christmas carol. Silent Night, a really good one, and you guys are very good at singing this one. Singing Silent Night. All right, let's do Silent Night then. So, our memory verse, right, let's just very quickly uh, run through them so that we can just all have a quick refresher of the ones that we've done. And I have got a new one for us to learn this week. For the next four weeks, we're going to learn a new one. And it's very easy, but it's very similar to what we've just been thinking of. So the very first verse is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Right, let's say all together, I want to hear you guys saying, I'm going to start you off. And then I want to hear you saying the verse all the way through. Are you ready? Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. The second verse that we had, which we finally managed to get all the way through with, with the two uh, girls, let me put it all up on the screen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. So again, I'll start you off and then I want to hear you all saying it all the way through till we get to the end. And then we'll start learning the new one that we've got. It's very short and it's very easy to memorize. Okay, you ready? And Excellent. Well said. Right, here is our new one. Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 2 and it says behold God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid and I've just realized I forgot to change the color of that one never mind let's say it through all together and see the reference at the end as well behold God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid Isaiah chapter 12 Right, sh let's sing this one because I'm running out of time to do our story. I'm just going to put it on the medium one just for this week. If we can sing it all, I'll well, maybe put it up to the faster one next week. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, that is story time, so have a shuffle in your seat, make sure you're comfy. So, we are moving on in our stories now, and well, we were thinking of Ruth and Boaz, and we were thinking of how Ruth was very special in the lineage, the family tree of the Lord Jesus. And, well, we've moved along a wee bit more in the stories of the Bible, and we're coming on to a new story altogether, but it's a man that I'm sure you've heard of before. Now, the family goes, and I've got my, my Bible, this is actually my Bible app that's on here, because I wanted to make sure I got the names right. So we've got a man called Elkanah, and this man was a glutton for punishment, because he decided he was having two wives. Why on earth the man would ever pick to have two wives at the same time, I don't know, but he did. He had a man called, a wife called Hannah. Funny, we've had a Ruth and a Naomi. These were normal names. We've got a Naomi here. And we've got a Hannah. And there's a Hannah here as well. Is there anybody called, now I don't know how people pronounce this one. What about Panina? Panina? Not Panini. That's a food. Zath Maf Panina was Joseph's new Egyptian name. Well remembered. That was because I gave you the clue of remembering as Panini, Zaf Naf Panini. But this name, this was a lady called Panina. I think that's how you say it. Right, so we have Hannah and we have Panina. And these are the two ladies that we're really going to think about for the first part of our story. And although Elkanah was their husband, um, he doesn't have an awful lot to feature in the story, but we will mention of occasion. So we're introduced to the two ladies. And this one on here, she's Panina. This one on here, this one's Hannah. And you can see that Hannah's quite sad. And Panina, well, I'm not sure whether she's happy, but have you heard of the word gloating? Yes, some of you heard the word gloating. Have you ever been in a circumstance where you are better than somebody else and you rub their nose in it? Yeah, generally a brother and sister or brothers or two sisters will find themselves in that circumstance and they will take great delight in mocking the other one who wasn't as fortunate or benefiting as much as they were. Well, Penina, she was gloating to Hannah because, as you can see in the picture, what are these? They are children. But none of those children belong to Hannah. They all belong to Penina. And Penina was very gloaty and she kept saying to Hannah, you can't have children, but I can. And every year she would wind up Hannah and say to Hannah, I can have children and you can't. But the Bible tells us that God had told Hannah that she was to be barren. That means that she wasn't able to have children for a period of time. And so Hannah was having to endure this. And as you can see in the picture, she had tears in her eyes. She did not like Penina winding her up. She did not like Penina gloating at the fact that she could have children and Hannah couldn't. And you know, Hannah used to go to Elkanah, her husband, and say, look, this is really bad. This is really upsetting me. And Elkanah would try and comfort her and try and say, look, it's okay. God has his plan. God will do what is right. But you know, it just didn't make life easy for Hannah. And it didn't make it any any more uh, easy because look at that smug face that's on Penina. She is really chuffed. You know, even to the point where she actually looks really bad. She looks like she's got hatred on her face because she's so angry and so smug at the fact that she can have children and that Hannah couldn't. Well, do you know, there was a tradition that the family always did, and that was they went up to Jerusalem one, one day of the year to worship God at Jerusalem, at the temple in Jerusalem. And so, in, in the usual travels this year, they decided to pack up all the family together, and off they went up to Jerusalem, and they went to the temple to worship, and they went through the usual rituals and the things that they had to do, and then there was a feast that they took part in, and there's as as they were sitting eating the feast, Elkanah realized that Penina and the children were there, but Hannah wasn't. Hannah had gone away from the feast and she was away somewhere else. And the Bible tells us that Hannah went to the temple and she went to pray. And Hannah was there praying in the temple and she was speaking to God. For that was where the people went. They went to the temple to speak to God. And so Hannah was there praying before God. And she was praying to God that God would please give her a son. And if he gave her a son, then the very first thing she would do is, after he was of age, she would send him back 
to serve God in the temple. Now, I'm not sure how you would feel. If you couldn't have had any children and then all of a sudden God gave you a child, would you be willing to give that child up? I'm not so sure we would be. But Hannah said, I will, and I will give my baby to God. Well, do you know, Eli the priest, he was moving through the temple. This is Eli here. He was the high priest at the time, and he was supposed to be overseeing all the things that were happening in the temple. And as he came in, he saw Hannah there praying. But you know, there's one thing that Hannah was doing that nobody could see, and that was praying to God. They couldn't hear her. And all that Eli could see was her lips moving. Do you know what he said to her? He said, excuse me, you're not allowed to be in the temple drunk. Does Hannah look drunk? Eli thought that Hannah had drank too much wine at the feast and had decided to come to the temple and she was drunk and she was speaking gibberish nonsense because her lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. No words, no sounds, no volume was coming out her mouth. But really what she was doing, she may have been moving her lips, but she was really praying to God from her heart. And she said to Eli, she says, Eli, I'm not drunk. I am not filled with wine. I am praying to God. That's why I'm in the temple. I am praying to God. And Eli said, so what are you praying for? And Hannah said, I have prayed to God. For years I have come to the temple. For years I have followed the traditions. And I have worshipped God. And I have prayed today to ask him to give me a son. And if he gives me a son, I will dedicate his life to serving you in the temple. Or to serve God in the temple. And Eli said to Hannah, he said, if God hears your prayer, God will honor you. And you know, Hannah believed that. In our memory verse that we've just learned, it said, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust. And you know, it's exactly what Hannah did. When it came to the crunch, when it came to the point, Hannah prayed to God and said, God, please give me a boy. Please give me a baby boy, and if you give me a baby boy, I will give him to serve you in the temple. And Eli told her God would hear her prayer. God would answer her prayer if it was his purpose and his will. And so Hannah went home with Elkanah and Penina and the children, and they went back to their own house. Well, I don't know how long, and the Bible doesn't tell us exactly how long it took, but at least nine months later, a little baby boy was born to Hannah and Elkanah. And you can see there, when we started introducing us to Hannah, what was running down her face? Tears. What's running down her face now? A smile. God had heard her prayer. God had listened to what she had said when she was praying in the temple. And God had answered her prayer, and they were given a little baby boy. And they called that baby boy Samuel. Now, Samuel lived in the house with Elkanah and Hannah. Now, one thing you don't notice in the picture, and that's not in the picture because the artist hasn't drawn it, there is no Penina. I wonder if that's because they couldn't draw her face because she couldn't be smug anymore and she couldn't be gloating anymore because Hannah had a baby. She had a child. She could have children after all. And so she couldn't gloat on her anymore. But this little baby boy was born and Samuel, he was cherished, he was loved, he was such a blessing in the family there and they loved Samuel so much but, but, but Hannah had made a promise. Hannah had made a promise that when that little boy was of age she would give him to God to serve him in the temple. Do you think she broke her promise? No. Mix, some say yes, some say no. Well, here's the artist's picture of what happened. When Samuel became a little boy, we don't know exactly what age he would be, maybe six, seven, something like that. After he had grown up, he would have been matured of some form. He would at least be able to walk and think for himself. Hannah came up to the temple again. And she brought with him Samuel. And she brought a little bag with him. And inside the bag, she had some things to remind him of her and the family at home. And she had a blanket and a, and a, a pillow and whatever else was needed for Samuel because when she went up to the temple this time this year this was the first time she was back in the temple from that last time when she was praying 
for however many years it was, maybe five, six, seven years, Hannah had never done the tradition of going up. She says, I'll not go back to the temple until it's time to give Samuel over. And so this was the first time she'd been back in the temple. And look who it is. Eli is standing at the door. Now, Eli remembered the promise that Hannah had said. And Hannah remembered the promise that she'd made to God. But somebody else remembered that promise. God remembered that promise. And so Hannah offered Samuel to Eli to work in the temple and to serve God in the temple. And that's exactly what Samuel did. And we'll find out some more about what Samuel did when he was working in the temple. But do you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us that Hannah went on to have more children. Because she was trusting in God, because she was believing that God was working, she not only got a baby boy, which she gave to God to serve in the temple, the Bible tells us that she went on to have more children. And God blessed her further with more children because she trusted and believed on God. And the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to die on the cross. And if we trust in him, then we can have our sin forgiven and we can serve God like Samuel did in the temple. So we're introduced to a new character. Not now we're thinking of Ruth and Boaz or Naomi, and not just that we're thinking of a Hannah and a Penina and Elkanah, but we now have a new boy to think about called Samuel. Okay, so we'll find a bit more about Samuel as we go on. See you later.